Today we are going to talk about the design, development and automation of functional GUI tests for your embedded GUI and HMI. To do so, we'll use a practical touchscreen device powered by an ARM IMX6 board, which will run a sample queue-based application. We'll demonstrate this together with the Squish GUI tester as our automation tool, development environment and as a framework for authoring our tests. Squish is an automated GUI testing tool, which can do lots of things, including designing tests, developing them, debugging, maintaining tests, and executing them. Tests created with Squish are cross-platform, and that's because Squish by default establishes recognition of UI controls via property introspection, and not just pixel-to-pixel -pixel comparison. Of course, we do offer image-based comparison tests for those cases where object-based recognition is not suitable or not possible. And we also offer optical character recognition support and OCR support for verifying on-screen text. But what's nice about Squish is that within a single test script, you can combine property recognition, image and screenshot comparison, and OCR text verification. Another thing I think is great about Squish is the scripting language support. Unlike some tools, we don't require you to learn some proprietary language. Instead, we allow you to choose from one of five free word languages, either Python, JavaScript, Ruby, Perl, or Tickle. And of course, it goes without saying that we equally support all five. I do want to add here that because Squish tests are authored using such popular languages, you can of course make use of the massive ecosystem of already existing external modules and reference them in your tests. There's no need to reinvent the wheel or start completely from scratch. I've also noted here our CI ALM integration support. Some popular tools we see integrated with some frequency include Jenkins, Azure DevOps and TeamCity. You can use these integrations for things like routine and unmanned test executions or requirement management. I want to talk about Squish's architecture before we get into the demo. A typical Squish package contains the Squish Integrated Development Environment or Squish IDE, a command line tool which allows you to run your tests in a distributed manner and there are two processes involved here, Squish Runner and Squish Server. Squish Runner interprets your test script and generates results while the Squish Server handles the communication between the Squish Runner and your application, what we call the application under test or AOT. In our setup, Squish Server does not need to be running on the device. We launch the binary using the start AOT tool, which allows us to attach to the IoT. So that means there's no need for us to modify the source code of our application. You can see here the device is connected using a network cable. Um, we are using an electric car queued GUI application. You can set the speed using those sliders at the bottom. There's also different tabs showing different widgets. Now for actually creating the test, there are three approaches to create a test. The easiest and fastest way is to get started just through record and replay. Advanced users might instead make use of the Squish API and script their tests manually. But by far the most common approach is the hybrid one, which combines record and replay together with some manual scripting. Most folks will record a snippet of a test, refactor it and use it as a part of their test framework. So let me show you the Squish IDE we've mentioned before. It's a development environment for test creation, maintenance and execution. It's an Eclipse-based IDE, so you'll be familiar with that. Let's first show you my server settings. If you go to Attachable AOTs, then go to the green box, you can see the IP address and port numbers on which the application is running. Let's first create a new test suite, which are containers of test cases, and we need to give it a name. Click next and we choose the kind of application we test. We said we are doing Qt. Next we decide which scripting language we'll use. So we can choose from any of the five supported. JavaScript, Perl, Python, Ruby and Tickle. In this example we'll be using Python. We'll select no application as well attached to it and we choose finish. So now the test suite is created and we can create a test case. You can choose from one of two, either BDD or behavior driven development or script, script based test cases. We do the script based. It's empty, so let's click the record button. We have to choose the application. So we'll choose the green box app and click OK. So from now on, all the actions we perform on the device are recorded. 
So I'll just click on different tabs here. I'll go to the buttons tab. We'll go here and here and click this checkbox again. And let's stop the recording. So we can see that Squish automatically generates a Python script. Take a look here in the first line of the main function where we are attaching to our application. Here we can see that the Squish API commands like click tab, wait for object or click button. We can play this back and the test case will be executed exactly the same on the device. And because this is just a Python script, we can refactor and add our own code. Let's say for example, at the end, we want to go to the tab graph. We can edit the code with our knowledge of the Squish API. So we'll just add click tab graphs here at the very end and we can run the test case again. So when we say Squish hooks into the application, we mean that it introspects it to recognize GUI elements as objects. Each UI control is recognized by key properties. With Squish, you can interact with the properties and the methods of those objects. So why does this matter? Let's say in one design example, you have a new iteration of your user interface, where for example, a button changes shape slightly. For example, from straight edges to a rounded, sh to a rounded shape. If you had created your test from purely image-based testing approaches, for example with screenshot from comparison, a subsequent run of your test would fail because the candidate and baseline version of your screenshots differ pixel to pixel. The default method of object verification squish is through property recognition. So it doesn't matter if a button shape changes or you reposition it on the GUI, it will still be recognized. The point is that your tests are robust even in the face of product evolution. Okay, so let's imagine a case where a property does change, not just the look and feel. For example, on that button, you change the text uh, on it from the word OK to the word accept. Let's also go a step further and imagine that this button is referenced a significant amount of times across our test suites. Do we need to go in and manually update the text change everywhere we find a reference to it? No, Squish stores the property of the object in what we call an object map or repository. Simply navigate to that object listing in the repository, update the label text from OK to accept, and your test will automatically detect the change. This is pretty powerful. So in line 14, we are clicking on the button. So how is Squish able to identify this button? You see, this click button takes in an argument wait for object function, which takes the object name and this object name is stored in our object repository, also called the object map. Let's navigate to the object map and open it up. Here we can see the list of properties by which this object is recognized. The container type, unnamed, visible. Note the object map is just a text file. We can edit it freely as we need to. Let's create a second test case. This time we'll verify how our application works. We'll click the record button again and attach to the green box app. On our application, let's click on this toggle button here. Now we can see that the light is now actually turned on. Let's verify that via the use of a verification point. Verification points or VPS will verify the expected results on this test scenario against the candidate version. With Squish, you can do multiple types of verifications, for example, an object property like text value of a control or screenshot verification like comparing a screenshot you can also do visual verifications of the geometric topology and the latest addition to VP types is verifying on-screen text using optical character recognition or OCR. We we'll choose now to verify object properties. In the Squish IDE, we need to choose which object we'd like to verify first and then later the property. So the question is, how can we identify the object? We can look for it here via searching the application object view, but another way is to use the Squish picker tool which we'll use to pick our object interactively. Now we can see the object in the IDE and we can also see the properties, which we can filter through. We're looking here for the glow property and the current value is set to true. This is added to our verification. Okay, so what we did here is just verify that our object has this property and compare candidate test runs to this baseline property. 
so we'll stop our recording once we insert the verification. Before we run the test case, I'd like to go to the test suite settings and make sure Squish takes a screenshot of the application upon a failed test result. We do this for help in our diagnostics. Before we run our test, let's also help our diagnostics by adding in some error logging to our reports. I can, for example, add a test log statement. I can also extend my test case by adding additional messages. Let's run the test case. As we expected, the test case failed because we actually turned off the light, but we expected it to be on. In our test result view here, we can see that at the time of the failure, we have a message that the verification we had failed, plus a detailed message with more info like the screenshot that was triggered. So this is how our application looked like at the time of the failure. With some simple Python coding, we can extend our test case so it only clicks on the button when the light is off. So we'll add an if statement to allow this condition. Now this test case will work regardless of the current status of the light. I want to show you screenshot verification points, which we'll use to verify not the properties of the controls, but rather the way the UI controls look. Let's create a test case again clicking on record and choosing the green box application. We'll go to the gorgeous tab on our device and I'll set the speed to some value. We'll verify the speedometer looks as it should when the value is set. We'll select the verification point again. I need to pick the object I want to verify and to note just one more time, we are verifying the look, there's no property picking here. So we choose save and insert verifications. I'm done with that test case, so we'll terminate the recording. Back in the IDE, we see that at the end of our script, the line for the verification point is there. So where is the information stored? Everything is in the test case resource location here. Let's run the test case. It passed. Let's see what happens if the test case fails. At the end, let's set the speed not to 46, but 66 and run the test case. As we expected, we get information that the screenshots do not match from the failed verification point. We can view the difference between the actual or candidate image and our expected or baseline image. In cases where the differences may not be obvious to our human eyes, we can use different modes to analyze the two screenshots. Modes like flicker, subtract, gray diff, red green diff, and we can also split the view between the expected and actual images. Like this slider here. There's much more we can do here, like excluding certain areas with masks, or changing how these images are compared, but we won't cover that here. But let's say our current image is in fact correct and we want to auto-update the test. What we can do is we can choose use as expected result and rerun the test. Now we see that the test is passed. And for example, say that at the end we would like to extend it somehow. We can add a breakpoint at the end and execute the test. As we probably guessed, the test will execute up until the breakpoint is reached. And when the breakpoint is reached, Squish is put into the test debugging perspective. 
this mode, the IDE lets you view the current value of different variables, lets you spy the application, see how it looks, and you get a debug view where you can step into functions. We also have the script console where you can try different commands before putting those into the script. What we want to do here is less debugging and more script extending. So let's choose record snippet. Now all the actions I perform will be recorded. And after clicking stop recording, this freshly recorded code is added above our line containing the breakpoint. Then we can remove the breakpoint and execute the entire test case with the newly added code. Let's talk about image-based testing. I don't want to make it seem like image-based testing is bad. Not at all. There are cases, although not as many, as object-based testing where it must be used. Like I mentioned, these include custom controls which are not otherwise recognized by Squish. Or if parts of your application are created with unsupported toolkits or legacy technology which Squish can't introspect. Or certain image data like medical image data which we can't recognize. So I just want to show you a quick demo on this kind of control recognition methodology. So let's create a new test case and we'll verify the image presence on the display. We'll attach to the green box and we'll go to graphs. In this test case, we'll look to verify that this wave is displayed somewhere on the display. So we go to verify and choose search image and now Squish fetches what is currently displayed and we can manually select the area that we want. There are some options you can see here. I can define a search area, but I'll stay with the default entire desktop. I can give it a name, I'll call it wave, and then choose to insert the verification. We are done now, so we can stop recording. We see now that our test is recorded and taking a look in the IDE, we see that first we click on the graphs tab and then we call test image present wave. And this wave is stored here in our test with our resources. So if we replay, we can see the test passed and the image wave with the occurrence 1 was found. With Squish's built-in remote control functionality, you can work with devices not co-located with yourself. Of course, in this demo I have the device next to me. But it could be in a different office or maybe in a device lab. And both the office or the device lab could be in different countries. So I want to show you how this works. Let's record a sample case. In the previous test case, I was physically manipulating the device with a touchscreen. I was touching it. Now we'll use a remote control feature to make the test, but only from my local hardware. So we'll enable the device view using the remote control button in the Squish control bar. Now we see the view of the display here in the IDE window, and we can interact with the application through this window, and the device will actually update in real time. So let's stop the test case here. Here you can see the output with our interaction, just as we expected. But what's important to note is that all these interactions were recorded, in fact without any physical interaction on the device. We can also use the remote control feature to just spy the application, which might be useful as preparation for test case development like spying properties or choosing objects if we are doing our tests through that hybrid script record approach I mentioned earlier. I can also use a picker to pick an object and you can see on the right I see the object and some properties. For example, I can go to the gorges and I can pick the speedometer and I can get the current value. When I'm done, I can close the remote control view and click the stop button and that's it.